If you spend any time in a Central American rainforest, the most abundant creatures you are likely to see are ants, and the most noticeable ones are the leafcutter ants. These ants are frequently seen carrying leaves and other bits of vegetation. They are sometimes called parasol ants because they look like they are carrying parasols over their heads. I observed them on a three-week trip to Panama in October 2012. There are about four dozen species of leaf cutters found in Central and South America, the Caribbean islands, and parts of the U.S. Leaf cutter ants don't cut only leaves. They also cut flowers and other types of vegetation, but they are selective in the types that they choose. Some members of this group are carrying vegetation that looks like pieces of pasta. Leafcutter ants stay busy, never seeming to slow down or let up. In a given patch of rainforest, they might cut up to a fifth of all the greenery. When cutting, their jaws can vibrate up to a thousand times a second. Note that all of the ants working on this leaf are roughly the same size. You can see that as one group is carrying leaves down the tree, another group is moving up the tree to get more. Leafcutter ants are able to carry objects that weigh as much as 10 times their own weight, which would be like a 200 pound human carrying something that weighs a ton. When they go out to forage, they leave a scent trail so that they will know how to get back to their nest. These small creatures are parts of complex colonies that can number in the millions, and each individual has a special role in what functions as a giant superorganism. Here is the entrance to a colony. The area a colony occupies underground can take up thousands of square feet and extend 20 feet below the ground. The leafcutter ants do not eat the leaves. Instead, they use the leaves to cultivate a fungus, feeding it freshly cut plant material and keeping it free from bacteria and molds. The only other insects known to farm fungus in this manner are some species of termites and beetles. The fungus that the leafcutters grow looks like spongy bread. The fungus can digest cellulose, but the ants cannot. The ants will eat the fungus only after it has digested the cellulose in the leaves. If you look closely at a group of leafcutter ants near a nest, you will see that unlike the ones who are shown cutting the leaf, they are not all the same size. There are up to seven different types called casts. You can see some of the different sizes in this footage slowed down to one quarter speed. The largest ones, sometimes called soldiers, defend the nest from intruders. They also keep the trails to the nest clean and clear away large bulky impediments. The middle sized ones do most of the leaf cutting and bring the leaves back to the nest. This is the size most commonly seen on trees and the cast that was seen cutting the leaf. The small ones provide protection for the nest and its inhabitants and sometimes hitch rides on the leaves being carried back to the nest. The hitchhiking might allow the smaller ant to provide protection to the larger one from attacks by parasitic flies. Inside the nest are still smaller ants who care for the fungus garden. They chew the leaves and defecate on them before feeding them to the fungus. The fungus cannot grow well without the enzymes in this and other fecal matter from the ants. So just as the ants cannot survive without the fungus, the fungus cannot survive without the ants. These smallest ants have antibiotics on their body which they use to kill any dangerous fungi or bacteria that might invade the fungus they are cultivating. There are also large ants who specialize in clearing away refuse and debris from inside the nest. All of these types mentioned so far are sterile females. There is also a queen who lays millions of eggs. And there are males who have wings and can fly. 
Their job is to fertilize the female, after which they die. If the number of any one cast of ants gets too large, the colony will take measures to get back in balance. For instance, if there are too many of the large soldiers, some of the small ants might kill them. The large ants do not put up any resistance while they are being culled. Leafcutter ants do have some predators. One is the nine-banded armadillo, who eats a lot of them. However, most creatures will not eat these or any other ants, which is one reason ant populations are so large. There are other types of ants in the rainforest, including Azteca ants. They are arboreal, preferring cecropia trees. Here is one of their mud nests. You can see these small Azteca ants moving around on the nest. Here are army ants, shown in real time and in slow motion. Other creatures know to get out of the way if they see these fierce, voracious ants marching through the forest. Some species of birds are called ant birds, not because they eat the army ants, but because they follow the ant swarms in the hope of eating the insects and other life forms who scatter when the army ants maraud through an area. That is why people who are looking for certain types of birds in the tropics are always on the lookout for army ant swarms. Still, neither the Azteca nor the army ants carry parasols and thus are not as eye-catching as the leafcutter ants. And the more one studies the leafcutters, the more amazing they seem. They are one of the few creatures other than humans to engage in agriculture, and they have been doing it for much longer. Likewise, they have been responsibly using antibiotics in their agriculture for countless millennia. Based on their population and many other criteria, leafcutters have been remarkably successful creatures.